Hello everyone, my name is Kobayashi Daisuke. I belong to Fujitsu as a software engineer. I work as a developer in the OSS community. I've been involved in Kubernetes development for three years and I acquired CKA. In this session, I will talk about introducing the latest Kubernetes features for troubleshooting. I will share three of the latest troubleshooting features on Kubernetes that are currently being discussed and developed in the community. The first is structure logging. Fit defines the standard structure for rows and standardized references to Kubernetes objects to make the most common logs easier to query. The second is future called contextual logging. The key idea is that the library is passed a logger instance by the caller and uses it for logging instead of accessing the global logger. The third is a function called distributed tracing. Uh, this is a feature to enable distributed tracing across Kubernetes. Both logging features can improve existing log formats and facilitate log analysis, aggregation, and development debugging, and troubleshooting. And distributed tracing is features that make it easier to debug requests that cross service boundaries by introducing open telemetry into Kubernetes core components. As more components introduce distributed tracing, uh, Kubernetes, with, with, Kubernetes will become easier to monitor, manage, and troubleshoot. In this presentation, I will explain the specific log format and usage, including actual example of drug tracing. Uh, this will give Kubernetes system administrators and developers some insight into how these newest features and great how, great and how to handle log and traces in the future. First theme is structured logging. I will talk about an overview of structured logging. This is a future proposed in CAP 1602 by Malik. This CAP proposes to define standard structure for Kubernetes log messages. Add method to log to enforce this structure as ability to configure Kubernetes component to produce log in JSON format and initiate migration to structured logging. Conventional Kubernetes logs do not have the concept of key value and the values corresponding to keys are not unified. So there are issues during log analysis processing, storage, query, etc. It is difficult to search if the naming format differs depending on the log. So by making the key a uniform naming format, uh, it allows users to search with a uniform filtering pattern when analyzing logs. This image shows what the log will look like once they are migrated. This advantage. So advantage of this format includes this point. So for user, uh, by having log message in structural format, uh, it is possible to standardize how to refer to Kubernetes object, for example, parts, nodes, etc. during log analysis. And this makes it easier to search many Kubernetes logs. Uh, by using the JSON format, we can receive the following benefits. It, is, it works with many logging backends, so for example, uh, Elasticsearch, Stackdriver, uh, WeekQuery, and Splunk. And it is easy to convert and pass, so analysis to write JQ commands are also available. And for the alpha, a new KLO method arrow to output of structural logging. So methods introduced in KLO. 
and the methods introduced by CAP include these methods. The catalog library of methods called InfoS and RS. And this is a method used where a previously InfoF and LF were used. Uh, with these methods, the output of the log message will be the message and some key value pairs. As an example below uh, shows the usage of the methods and the resulting log output. I will talk about the log message structure. This cap would like for the Kubernetes community to settle on one preferred log message structure that will be enforced by new catalog methods. Proposed structure should separate log message from its argument and treat log and argument as key value pairs and be easy to pass and query and have a specific guidance on log message and its argument. For this purpose, Kep suggests to use following log message structure. Structure is a message key one equal value one and key two equal value two and so on. And so message is formatted using percent Q format logic and keys are formatted using percent S format logic and values are formatted using percent Q format logic, except for number and boolean. And uh, keys are separated from values with a equal sign. A message, a uh, key values are separated with a single space. The values to be put in Key, the key value pair part can be arbitrarily determined by the developer of the code. So there is a possibility of variation in naming. For example, when representing a bot, use only the pod name, or right, the namespace is included, or we use UUID. To achieve a uniform representation of Kubernetes objects, structural login created the helper function to format it in a specific way. Uh, these functions are key object and KLF. This shows one preferred format for responding reference in logs and build this format. For example, if we create the following pod objects, specify the pod object itself with the OK object function. Alternatively, if we specify the main name spec and name of the pod object with the KLF function. Uh, logs the output in a uniform format of pods equal namespace slash name uh, as shown below. Uh, pass some object left to info s and info ls function and uh, it will output in one preferred format. A for node namespace object, object left with namespace but empty is recommended. Now, let's talk about the flags that will be introduced. Structured logging allows you to select the output log format from text format and JSON format. Uh, for that, choose a flag logging format is introduced. This is implemented as an option in component base. Some advantages of using JSON are Broadly adapted by the logging library with very efficient implementation, the adapt and the log. And uh, out of the box, support by many logging backend, and uh, easily passable and transformable, and uh, existing tools for ad hoc analysis, so JQ. And some JSON keys are reserved words. So TLC is time stamp as Unix time and V equal verbosity. And ARR is a string and MSC is message. At the end of this chapter, I will introduce the development plan and progress of the future. 
This feature is already in upper and basic development. Catalog has migrated to V2 and supports logging in structured format. Along with that, the login format flag has been implemented, and it is also possible to output in JSON format. So talk about migration. 21 logs which are counted to the majority of Kubernetes of our all log output have been migrated to structured format. Among the components, Kubernetes and Kubernetes scheduler have been migrated. A performance benchmark is also being done with this transition. So next, contextual logging. Contextual logging is future proposed in CAP 1377 by Patrick Owey. The proposal is uh, to extend the scope of the ongoing convention of logging calls to structural logging by removing the dependency on the global catalog logger. Like the convention to structured logging, this activity can combat code incrementally over as many Kubernetes releases as necessary without affecting the usage of Kubernetes in the meantime. Contextual logging replaces the global log by passing a log r.log instance into functions via a context.context context or an explicit parameter. And it enables the core to attach key and value pairs that get included in all log messages. It enables the caller to add names and uh, describe which component or operation triggered by a log message. And uh, it enables the cloud to reduce the amount of log messages emitted by V by changing the diversity. This works without having to pass any additional information into the Colby's DB code. The additional information was setting a store word in the method log instance that is passed to it. So the party components that use Kubernetes packages like client Go are no longer forced to use KLO. They can do an arbitrary implementation of logger to logger and configure it as desired. But contextual logging does. It is possible to add information about the function, chorus, and relationship to the log, and making it possible to trace the flow processing. For example, give scheduler automatically adds the following information to the log in the plugin, during filter processing by the volume binding plugin for ports, etc. As I guess, we can adjust the amount of logging by changing the verbosity of the logger. Uh, when Cube Scheduler performs common processing for parts, has put detailed logs for implement port and less for less important uh, ports. Next, an overview of log R. Log R defines a common logging API and interface for the purpose of not locking Go language programs to a specific logging implementation. A log out itself does not actually have a logging implementation, but a log out defines what methods should be implemented as a logging library. The actual implementation depends on the backend logging library that supports the logout interface. Logout consists of a logout type and a log sync interface. These definitions are shown in the gray boxes. A logout type is structured with log sync interface, and logout type have some method of logout type, and uh, it can be passed as an instance to a function argument. And a logsync interface is an interface for the main method of logout, and its actual implementation depends on the logging library. 
here a method that logal defines. Info is a standard log output for log L. And error is error log output. And V is velocity specification of log. The higher the number, the less log R output. There is default. Return the new logal instance after setting velocity. Note that the specified numbers are added instead of overwritten. With name function as the name of the logger instance, return the new logger instance after name setting. Uh, we can pass this new logger instance to a function. If we use with name function inside a function, the name will be appended and this name will also be appended to the output of logs. Now with values, with values as a key value pair values to the log instance. The value of this key band value is also added to the output log. I will introduce one use case of contextual logging. Contextual logging has the ability to trace function calls and relationships. Cube scheduler developers want to know which port are associated with which operation and scheduler log plugin logs. So, when Cube scheduler starts processing port, I use logger dot with value function to create a new logger and pass it to subsequent processes and functions. Then, a logger is used. Hereafter, pot name is automatically assigned. And second, so execute a logger dot with name function for this logger when calling the volume binding plugin for a specific operation. So from now on, uh, logs using this new logger will automatically be given the information of pot name and filter slash volume binding. Second use case is logger and bubbles. In unit tests, developers can provide their own logger and distinguish output for each test case without changing the log code. We can change the implementation of functions such as info for each logger. The value set with, with values and with name is linked to the logger, so we don't have to pass the content to be displayed individually. It can basically work independently of K-log output. For example, we can have our own logger. We can completely replace our binary logging backend and see that our K-log based Kubernetes code picks it up and use it. And second guess, if we use client go in our application, we can reduce the velocity of the log messages from client go by creating a logger.v1 and passing it to your client go code. Logger v3 info call in client go is the same as logger v4 info in application, not visible with a v equals 3. Since the V value is associated with the logger, we can collectively hide the logs output by components that you are not interested in. I will explain how to use each feature. If we want to assign a value to the entire log, so use with values and with name method. We can add messages to embedded in all logs that inherit that logger using with values and with name. 
Uh, this also makes it possible to follow function calls. Another case, if we want to specify a logger, so set logger when calling Kubernetes library. How to set the logger is to attach the logger to the context and pass it. Some functions to support context were added in Kerlog library. Kerlog.newContext makes new context that has a specified logger and Kerlog.fromContext returns the logger that is included in the specified context. The features can be used just by importing Kerlog and context library. With values and with name functions output example are here, uh, like these yellow boxes. First logger has only port key value, so the output is added the port we call an S slash port name. Second logger, the logger A, has name filter and volume binding. So the output shows the filter slash volume binding and port equal ns slash port name. Third logger, the logger B has another name, a filter and node resources. So the output shows the filter slash node resources and port equal ns slash port name. Next, I will explain how to use the logger. As I said earlier, so loggers can be attached to a context and propagated between code. In this example, we first add a logger with the name example and the value who equal var. If we use the logger to output the log, the values so example and who equal that will be added in addition to add a message. To following example, attach a logger to a context and propagate it. Here, uh, we use a function klog.newContext to create a context with the logger attached. We pass that context to a function, and within that function, we retry the uh, logger by using context. After that, we pass new information to this logger in the function and output the log. As a result, all rows in this function will, be, will have the prefix example slash something and the values uh, foo equal bar and pod equal ns slash name. Uh, using logas in this way uh, makes it easy to trace correlation ship. Uh, at the end of this chapter, I will introduce the development plan and progress of the future. Uh, this feature is already fully developed up to alpha for contextual logging. Kerlog and Kerlog are implementation based on the log R API. Uh, the key idea is that libraries are faster logger instance by their core and I use that for logging instead of accessing a global logger. The library decides about the logging implementation, not the libraries. The initial revision of this cap describes a plan for moving all code for contextual logging into Kubernetes IO slash KLR repository. Transition to that would have removed all legacy code from Kubernetes. However, uh, that transition would have been complicated and forced all consumers of Kubernetes code to adjust their code. So, therefore, the scope of the KP was reduced from a remove dependency on Kerlog to remove dependency on global logger in Kerlog. 
Next demo is the projected catalog specific frog in Kubernetes components. This future is proposed in CAP 28.4.d5. Catalog has a lot of flags which might not be meaningful nowadays. Uh, this CAP proposes to duplicate and in the future the removed a subset of the Kubernetes com command line flag from Kubernetes components with goal of making logging of Kubernetes core components simpler and uh, easier to maintain and extend by community. Lack of investment and growing number of catalog features in impacted project quality. Catalog has multiple problems. Catalog performance is much worse than alternatives, for example, a JSON format. It doesn't support throughput to fulfill Kubernetes scalability requirements, and uh, its complexity and confusion caused by mounting backward compatibility for legacy g low future and flags. In this future, what kind of flag are left? Uh, all catalog specific feature flag except V and V module are removed from Kubernetes component flags. The component based uh, low flash frequency flag is also kept. Let's see what we change. Uh, this table lists the duplicated flags. These flags include features such as low file lighting and low load editing. If we are using those features, we have suggested some migration options. So if we want to output logs to the file, uh, we can use a cube low runner solution as an alternative. And there are solutions like when we went with low stash, etc. for low rotated. So I uh, will introduce the development plan and progress of this future. And this future is always in alpha and beta environment. Among the Kubernetes component flag, uh, the target flags are already deprecated. The remaining the Kubernetes component flag for Kerog are uh, V uh, much a uh, log flash frequency. Flag duplication should comply with standard Kubernetes policy and require three releases before removal. So these flags will be removed eventually in the 1.26. So next thing is APS arbitration. The next feature to introduce is APS ABA tracing. This feature was proposed in CAP 647 by David Ashpole. This CAP proposes enhancing the APS server to allow tracing requests. For this, it proposes using OpenTelemetry library and exports in the OpenTelemetry format. So first, uh, what is distributed tracing? Just briefly, if a user makes a request to something, it often passes through a variety of services along its path. We'd like to know what path a particular request took, and it would be great if we could get a graph or something to show it visually. So OpenTelemetry is a beta neutral open source observability framework for instrumenting, and generating, and collecting, and exporting telemetry data, such as traces, metrics, rows. As an industry standard, it is natively supported by a number of vendors. So why instrument the API server? The Kubernetes API server is a great candidate for tracing for a few reasons. It follows the standard RPC model and serves a request by making requests to downstream components, which makes it easy to instrument. 
users are latency sensitive. Uh, if a request takes more than 10 seconds to complete, many clients will time out. It has complex service topology, so a single request could require consulting a dozen webhooks or involve multiple requests to ETCD. This future was proposes as there are many benefits to distributed tracing in APS server for this reason. My use case is to allow control plane administrator to easily find API server's issues. In distributed system, it can be hard to figure out where problems are. It's also hard to find out what route a request took. If we can trace it, we can see which component was included in the path of the request. In addition, uh, traces are easy to visualize, so we can understand the sequence of events, how long they took, and easily spot potential problems area without being familiar with the internal of the infrastructure. An API server normally corrects trace at the low sampling rate. Sampling only some requests has less impact of system performance. Even for issues that don't happen every time, a low sampling rate is generally enough to suppress a representative trace over time. Traces can be also corrected on demand when problems occur. If we know the request we want to correct, so we can correct the trace of that request by setting trace context and sampling the request. When tracing a request that reads nodes, or we can trace the request by using the command like below. I will introduce the future to be added. This can be add tracing of API server requests. This can be wrapped API servers, HTTP server, and HTTP client with auto HTTP to get spans for incoming and outgoing HTTP requests. Uh, this generates spans for all sample incoming requests and propagates context with all client requests. Second, uh, this CAP proposes the use of open telemetry tracing framework to create and export spans to configure backends. Thus, um, add context propagation to API server. Context propagation is implemented across the API server to propagate spans. A force is provides function related to trace in a utility library that wrap order. Uh, having control over uh, how the client libraries are used in Kubernetes can enable maintains to enforce policy and make broad improvements to the quality of the telemetry. So how to use this future? Well, let's Turn on future get and restart API server. And so first uh, enable the API server tracing feature get, then set the configuration for tracing by pointing the uh, tracing config file flag on the Kubernetes API server and our config file. Of which contains API server clients and sampling rate per million. In addition, ETCD can Tracing is enabled by setting the following three flags in ATCD. And run open telemetry corrector to correct exported spans. Service exports spans in OTLP format and correct correct them. It is the Load of the backend to visualize and correct its information. Uh, we have which chose the backend. 
And this image is visualizing traces with data, and we can easily see how long each process is, is taking. At the end of this chapter, I will introduce the development plan and progress of this feature. This feature is already fully developed up to alpha. Tracing of incoming and outgoing HTTP and the RPC requests is implemented in QAPI server. This makes it possible to collect traces of API server requests using the OD collector. In beta version, they will implement tracing 100% of requests does not break scalability test and publish example of how to use OD collector with Kubernetes and parity with the old text-based traces. In the future, they plan to solicit feedback and make improvements and migrate text-based tracing and more. So, I've also introduced keyword tracing as a related cap. So, this cap is proposing cap 2831. This cap proposes that enhance the keyword to allow tracing gRPC and HTTP API requests. A keyword traces can also be visualized with a Jaeger like this figure. Uh, it is easy to see how long the processes will take. So I will introduce the development plan and progress of the feature. This feature is already fully developed up to alpha. In alpha version, uh, they implement tracing of incoming and outgoing gRPC and HTTP requests in the keyword. And a beta version, they plan publish example of how to use the output telemetry collector with Kubernetes. And uh, our time to feedback and improvement. And a revisit format used to export spans. Finally, here is the URL for cap, uh, which is a function introduced it in this time. If you are interested in, so please refer to the detailed information on the content. Okay, uh, that's all. So thank you for listening my presentation.